welcome. Today we will see some beautiful application of uh, Perceval identity and Fourier series in general uh, regarding a very interesting problem that is called the isoperimetric problem. Uh, what is an isoperimetric problem? So, in our school days in the basic calculus, we have learned that uh, given a fixed perimeter uh, among the rectangles, which rectangle can take the maximum area. So, for example, now if we have uh, a rectangle which is le uh, perimeter is let us say 4, so which I take So, suppose this side is, uh, let me take 0 0.3, so this is 0 0.3, so this is 0 0.6, now I, this is uh, 1.7 and 1.7. So, now and I take another, let us say the perimeter is 4, I take 1, 1, 1, 1 square. So, uh, what is the area of this? The area is 1 and what is the area? This is 1.7 into 0 0.3. So, this is uh, 0 0.51. So, obviously, this area is uh, bigger than this area of this rectangle where how, their perimeter is same. So, with the basic calculus one can always show that among such class of rectangles with a fixed area, let us say a fixed perimeter let us say L, then the rectangle which and takes the maximum area is square. That is a very easy, you can take x uh, and then this perimeter, uh, this is x x and then this is L minus 2 x divided by 2, then area is a function of x. You apply your standard uh, calculus and can get that this uh, x is equal to L by 4 and that will give you a square. Similarly, among all triangles with uh, the fixed uh, perimeter, one can see that isosceles triangle, this enclosures uh, the maximum area. So, natural thing is to ask, so why only the triangle and the rectangle? Suppose for any general n gons, uh, with the same perimeter, which geometric shape is going to give us the maximum area. And uh, now, in the ancient Ma Greek, they knew that given any closed curve, let us say I have a closed curve like this with the same perimeter, then which curve is going to encircle the maximum area. So, this in general, this type of problem is called isoperimetric problem and which have been studied since ancient time and the study still is going on in various directions. So, we what we will uh, see in this lecture is first part we will be discussing little bit about the historical account. I mean how this problem has progressed and uh, then we will give a very beautiful argument of Steiner. So, Steiner had produced various um, uh, proof for this problem. So, we will discuss one of the proof and then we will give a very rigorous proof using 
Fourier series techniques. Okay, first let us have a story. In the Greek mythology, Dido was the founder and queen of Carthage, a city of on the northern coast of Africa. She was the daughter of Belus, a king of Tyre in Phoenicia and the sister of Pygmalion. King Belus has wanted his son and daughter to share royal power equally after his death. But Pygmalion seized the throne and murdered Dido's husband. Dido and her followers fled from Tyre, landing on the source of North Africa. There a local ruler named Larbas agreed to sell Dido as much land as the skin of a bull could cover. I mean one would like to imagine that uh, only a very small patch of land a skin of bull can cover. However, Dido was very intelligent. What she did is that she caught the skin of the bull into very thin strips, so like thread. Then she first most likely solved the problem of enclosing the largest possible area within a given perimeter, because when you were taking the thin strip, you were fixing the perimeter. Now, you tie from keep on tying it, so you make uh, a tie, so this is going to be a closed curve. Now, she knew that how to put the closed curve, so such that she can get the maximum area and that is what she did. So, natural intuition is that it is a circle. So, this is uh, the problem then is the problem of enclosing the largest possible area within a given perimeter is called the isoperimetric problem in general. Okay, so, let us see some systematic development of this uh, problem. Uh, the question among all the figures of equal perimeter, which figure has the greatest area? That is what is uh, our problem. Now, it was first realized that a square has greater area than long thin rectangle of the same perimeter. So, that is what we had already seen in our school days. The general question was investigated in the golden age of Greek geometry. So, Genodorus, you can see that it is from 200 to 140 BC. So, what he showed that of all rectilinear figures having an equal perimeter, the greatest is that which has the most angles. And then Pappus of all circular segment having the same circumference, the semicircle is the greatest. And geometrical approach could not go much further without the precise notion of perimeter and area. So, let us before talking about the problem, let us uh, start with Heron's problem. Let A and B are two given points on the same side of the line L. Find a point D on L such that the sum of the distance from A to D and from B to D is minimum. So, what is it saying? Suppose I take a line L here and I have A here, B here. Now, let me take a point D here. So, I have A D plus D B. And in another point, if I am taking d prime here, this is a d prime, b d plus b d prime. So, I can keep on, I can choose this d double prime. If I am choosing, then I have this. So, now 
is this A D plus B D is it greater than A D double prime plus B D double prime or for that matter A D plus B D is greater than A, A D prime plus B D prime. So, which means I our job the question is that does whether there exists a point on this line such that A D plus B D is going to be the least among all such sum of the length of A D prime plus B D prime. Okay, so, here is uh, the picture you can see. So, the proof is uh, uh, simple. Uh, so, now you take the line, you have the point A, you have the point B here. So, now what one do is that you extend the perpendicular to the line L and come up to B prime such that this is equal to this. Now, you join A B prime. So, where this is what you will get the point D. So, now you take any other any other point D prime. So, you have this. Now, let me call this as uh, and then uh, so, A D plus B D. Now, my claim is that A D plus B D is less than a d prime plus b d prime. Okay. So, as you can see that a d prime plus d prime b is equal to a d prime plus d prime b prime because this is an isosceles triangle, this is right angle. So, now you have got A D prime plus D prime B. Now, you look at the triangle A D prime B prime. This is the sum of this two side. So, which means this is going to A D prime plus D prime B. This is strictly, this is greater or equal to a B prime sum of the two sides of the triangle is bigger than the third one. So, now this A B prime is nothing but A D plus D B prime and now this is A D because again B D B prime is an isosceles triangle. So, this is B D. So, this point D is going to give us that this is the minimum among the sum of this two. Okay. So, that is what the proof is. So, now next one is that if there exists a plane of n gons having the largest area among all n gons of given perimeter. So, here I am assuming that if there exists a plane n gon having largest area among all n gons of given perimeter, then it must have equal sides, which means it is a regular polygon n gon. That is uh, also not uh, uh, very hard to see as you can uh, see that. Uh, uh, so, now let a 1, a 2, a n be a maximal n gone, then it has to be convex. Suppose it, this is very easy to suppose this is a n gone, then if I am doing this length and this length, if I am reflecting this along this line, then this is the same perimeter, I am not changing the perimeter, but the area has increased. Hence, it has to be a convex region. 
Okay, let a1, a2 and a2, a3 be two adjacent size such that a1, a2 is not equal to a2, a3. Suppose now I have a1, a2 and then this one is, this is a1, a2 and this is a3. So, which they do not, uh, this is not a 1, a 2 is not equal to a 2, a 3. So, what we do is, so now you join the line a 2, a 3. So, now you draw a line parallel to a 1, a 2 passing through a 2. Then, as you can see by the previous observation, so, uh, you will get a point D for which the A 1 D plus A 3 D is minimum and therefore, the, so I will draw the diagram here again and so now let us see this is uh, my A 1 A 2 and this is a 2, this is a 1, a 3. Now, and this is the line L. And now, what I am going to get is that I will get a point uh, D. D is this. If I, by the runs problem, if I go, so if you join this, then this is my point D and uh, this D is different from A 2. The area of triangle A 1 D A 3, this area of this triangle is equal to A 1 A 2 A 3 because their height is same, the lines are parallel. But A 1 plus A 1 A 2 plus A 2 A 3 this is greater or equal to a 1 d plus a 3 d. Now, construct the isosceles triangle, suppose this is, this is our alpha, this is our beta. So, now this is the parallel line. So, this is also becomes to beta and this is, this angle is alpha and alpha is equal to beta. So, this is an isosceles triangle a 1 a 2 prime a 3 such that a 1 a 2 plus a 2 a 3 is equal to a 1 a 2 prime plus a 2 prime a 3. So, now, however, the delta of a 1 a 2 prime, the triangle area is bigger or equal to triangle A 1 D of A 3 and that is what is a contradiction. Okay. So, that is easy to see. Uh, in case of triangle, as we have seen, this is going to be equilateral and uh, in a quadrilateral, uh, without having a rectangle, if I take any quadrilateral, then the maximum area is going to be attained by a rhombus. Okay, so, now that is the time when Steiner has entered in 1841. So, if gamma is a figure whose area is greater than that of any other figure of the same perimeter, then gamma is convex that is trivial to observe. You can convince yourself. Suppose, if it is not uh, convex, then, then uh, you just flip it along this line, what you are going to get that this area, this entire thing is bigger than this green patch. So, therefore, it has to be convex. So, that is believable. Now, Steiner has to prove that this is a circle. Uh, so, now what he had proved? If gamma is a figure whose area is greater than any of other figure of the same perimeter, then gamma is a circle. So, here the figure is understood uh, to be kind of a closed curve. So, 
Now, the proof uh, of this is that if we can, if you divide, you can get a line. So, you it is a convex domain. So, if you divide it, so along that, if you can see on one side of that is a semicircle, then you are done. Okay. So, now suppose uh, it is not a semicircle, then what is going to happen that uh, you know that if it is a semicircle, you join any two points here, then this is going to be 90 degree. That is what the Euclidean geometry tells us in our high, uh, uh, school. So, now what happens suppose it is not 90, now you take take this. So, keep this 2 here. So, now this 2 here, now you stretch it up to 90 degree. Now, what you are going to, you are not changing the perimeter, because this is the this and this, they are the same, uh, you are keeping as the 2 year, but the area has increased. So, therefore, it is that is a simple geometric argument. Steiner said that uh, this is uh, going to be a semicircle. Now, there are lot of criticism came. So, first of all, what do we mean by a figure? That is obviously, we are assuming there is a closed curve. And the interior of a simple closed curve or not do we allow intersection. So, and then are we assuming for any simple closed curve the notion of length exists? Because when we are talking about perimeter, we are talking about the concept of the length. So, now the question is that whether the length exists or not. Okay. And then most importantly, uh, what Steiner assumed that such a gamma exists. Look, what Steiner has proved? Steiner proved that given a fixed perimeter, if the curve is assuming the maximum area, then that has to be a circle. Now, what he is assuming that there, at, there exist one such curve which assumes the maximum area. It may not happen that there exists such a curve. So, now even the criticism can be well understood in this uh, simple example. One is the greatest integer. Uh, I can prove that let n not be the largest integer. There we are assuming that let this curve has the maximum area. Then I am proving that this, this curve is a circle. So, now here among all the curves, among all the numbers, suppose if I am assuming that n naught be the largest integer, then n naught plus, if n naught is greater than 1, then n naught square, which is again an integer, which is strictly greater than n naught, which is a contradiction. So, now that is the uh, flaw in uh, Steiner's argument that uh, he had tacitly assumed that uh, such a curve exists. Then there was a real controversy came up and uh, which also include Dirichle and other people with the Steiner. Then uh, at a later part, so the first person who gave a full proof uh, of uh, this isoperimetric problem is Westerus. So, he as a matter of fact, there was a proof that if you assume the there is a curve which has among the same equal perimeter has the maximum area, then by using calculus of variation technique, Euler has proved that also another proof by using calculus of variation technique. As a matter of fact, he developed the calculus of variation to solve this problem. And uh, then Westerus refined the proof of Euler and he gave a full proof without assuming the fact that there exists. Uh, without assuming that such a maximal curve exists. So, then let us try to define all these things in a rigorous fashion. What is our problem? 
So, what do we mean by a curve? Now, curve is a continuous map from gamma from any interval to r 2. It closed means gamma of 0 is equal to gamma of 2 pi and which means you start with any continuous curve and then this it is starting point is the ending point and the simple means it is 1 1 which means 1 is kind of discarding the curve like this. So, this is the sim just the simple curve which is 1 1. Okay. Now, now let gamma s I define the set gamma s equal to this is a set in R 2 and which has all the points of the curve which it means x s and y s because there are two coordinates. Okay. And if both x and y they are differentiable we know that in our calculus course that the length of the curve can be we say that if they are differentiable it is rectifiable and the length of the curve is integral from 0 to 2 pi mod of gamma prime s d s which is equal to x 1 prime s square plus y 1 prime s square square root that is the modulus Euclidean modulus d s. It exists and L is called the arc length of the curve. So, this is basic calculus what we had learned earlier. Now, so, as we know that uh, there exists, so every curve admits a parameterization by arc length. So, in which that is x 1 prime square plus y 1 prime square is equal to 1. So, we can consider always a parameterization by arc length. Okay. And uh, then with the several uh, variable calculus and uh, the with the exact differential, we know that a is equal to minus of 0 to 2 pi y s x prime of s d s, which is equal to 0 to 2 pi y prime s x s d s x s d s. And if we add this to then 2 a is equal to this plus this. So, which is equal to a is equal to 1 half of 0 to 2 pi y prime s x s minus y s x prime s d s. So, this is the standard fact from the calculus and this is very important to uh, know that this is what our area is. And uh, if we to be very careful then y is of course, a continuous function and x prime of s. So, now this has to be integrable. So, we can take a c 1 curve that means x prime is also continuous then the question of the integrability is no more a problem. Okay, so, there now there comes Hervey's. So, what was his uh, proof? of the theorem. So, the theorem of the Hervey's, so he precisely said that suppose gamma is a simple closed curve in R 2 of length L, gamma is a simple closed curve with length L and let A denote the area of the region enclosed by the curve. This is the area of the region which is enclosed by the curve and I can take this suppose if I consider another curve or some other curve. So, now, so for this curve the L is fixed now the area is going to change now whatever the area you are going to take the area will always be less or equal to L square by 2 pi this is the perimeter and as you can see if L is 2 pi then this 2 pi L then this is 4 pi square L square. So, so Hervey's theorem states that suppose gamma is a simple closed curve in R square of length L and A denotes the area of the region enclosed by the curve, then A square uh, 
is uh, lesser equal to here there is a typo which is equal to 4 pi. So, now if our curve is a circle then this would be the length would be 2 pi r and uh, therefore, the L square is equal to 4 pi square r square and then L square by 4 pi this is equal to pi r square. So, which essentially tells that this is the circle the area is equal to equality holds if a is a circle. So, we will in the next lecture we will prove this inequality. Thank you.